Hi, I'm Ken Kappa from the New England Motorcycle Museum, and today I've got this awesome 1971 Odaka 8100 that I just had the pleasure of riding around the block a couple times, bring back some memories from my childhood. Is there a block I can put under the kickstand to stand her up? There we go. Give you a better look at it. Let's stand it right up. This is an all original 1971 Odaka Ace 100. Extremely rare to find one with this low miles, 1800 miles on it, 1849 miles. Pretty much all stock as far as I can tell. I think that even the tires are original on it. It's got the nice rack on the back. This is the street legal version um, of the Odaka Ace 100. So it comes with a headlight, taillight, speedometer, odometer, um, and uh, everything's all there. Got a really cool looking uh, factory original exhaust uh, with the uh, heat shield on there. Um, exhaust appears to be in excellent shape. The uh, <clears throat> the uh, NADA value on this bike in excellent condition is three thousand six hundred and twenty dollars, which is quite interesting since they sold new for forty five years ago for three hundred and sixty five dollars. But they're somewhat of a collector's item right now, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of the history of the Hodaka motorcycle. Uh, in the world of classic dirt bikes, Modaka motorcycles aren't the average bikes. In many cases, a vintage motorcycle is dad's toy. Don't bother your father, he works hard and needs some time to himself, explains mom. Modaka motorcycles are a little different. Small, light, user friendly, and easy to start. Modakas tend to be our family toy. Mom, dad, junior, and sister ride them. Grandma, grandma corner works and grandpa wrenches. Modakas are a reason for family social outing. Modakas are weekend fun for all. And there's quite a cult following on these little bikes now. Uh, the Hodaka phenomenon of the 60s and 70s was caused by a unique sequence of events. Baby boom generation was in their teens, and there were a lot of unpaved roads in rural, rural areas. And Honda had popularized riding small motorcycles. So, following Honda's success, many Japanese motorcycle companies sought to export their products to the United States. One of them being the Pacific Basin, Basin Trading Company, Kabako, uh, which sold this brand under the name Hodaka. Uh, the first Hodaka, the Ace 90, set the tone for the new brand. The Hodaka Ace was fully street legal, this bike here is, uh, but it was more than capable in dirt. It had a light tubular steel frame, the exhaust was placed high and out of the way, and there's plenty of room under the fender to shed mud. The, the finished machine is lightweight, about 170 pounds, and good handling, get good performance. I'm, I'm 225 pounds, and the bike hauled me around no problem. Um, this is the five speed model. The 90 was the four speed, the, the 100 is a five speed. Um, it was easy to start, it's reliable, and a contemporary Hodaka ad celebrated two Hodaka Ace riders making a run down the Baja Peninsula with no problems behind flat hot, besides flat tires. So this bad boy can handle the Baja Peninsula, thousand miles on the Baja Peninsula. Um, it certainly can survive another 45 years of trail riding around your house. This bike's 45 years old, look at the engine on this thing, the cylinder fins are, there's no cracks or, or, or or dents anywhere in the cylinder fin. The original carburetor and air box are in mint shape. The exhaust is in mint shape. The engine cases are mint. And one of the things I want to point out is take a look at that, the frame rails on this thing. There's no, the paint's the original paint it is, isn't even worn off, worn off in the frame rails. This obviously wasn't ridden off road. Um, there's no dents or dings on the frame rail anywhere. The front fender is in mint condition. The forks are in super shape. The front wheel's nice and straight and true. Um, headlights in great shape. No dents or dings anywhere on the headlight. Uh, original forks look to be in excellent shape. Original bars are in good shape. Tackens, or not tack, the speedometer's in good shape. All the cables look, the cables look almost new. They look really, really good. Um, and, uh, you know, the foot pegs are in great shape. The rubber's not damaged on them. Um, Kickstand. The uh, belt guard is in mint shape. It's got the original rack, the tail light, even, I mean, what, what are the odds of the tail light lasting 45 years with no cracks or anything on it? The rear metal fender is beautiful. I don't see any dents on the, on the rear fender anywhere. Rear rim looks good, as does the swing arm and shocks. Just a beautiful example of a 1971 Hodaka AS100. Um, it's got the original toolbox on the side here. Great bike. Uh, it's been on display in the New England Motorcycle Museum for uh, a short while, and, and it's being sold to raise funds for the museum restoration project that we're working on. You might have heard about it on the internet. It's Google New England Motorcycle Museum. There's a ton of information about us there. So, um, Hodakas were something of a cult phenomenon in their day, and they continued to amass a dedicated following. Ironically, not longer after the demise of Hodaka, interest in vintage off-road competition started growing. 
While modern off-road machinery, machinery has awesome capabilities, unless you're a young athlete, many of the competitive dirt bikes made in the last 30 years are hard to ride. Hodakas, on the other hand, can be ridden by just about anybody. Their enduring appeal is highlighted at Hodaka Days, which take place every year in Athena, and features motocross, off-road riding, bench racing, and part swapping, all featuring Hodakas, of course, and for 2006, the event was held in Ohio, where Hodaka was a featured off-road mark for the AMA's Vintage Motorcycle Days at Mid-Ohio Racetrack. Hodaka has a special following, Stewart says. There's this feeling of, we're the underdog, we're number two, so we try harder. There's nothing we can't do. Hodaka people are down to earth and friendly, and there really is a wide spectrum of people interested in the bike. At Hodaka events, you see little kids with Hodaka coloring books, 13-year-olds racing with Harry Taylor, the former service manager, explaining how to make a timing wheel out of a paper plate. There's no attitude and a sense of humor about the whole thing. How can you be serious around bikes with names like Dirt Squirt, Road Toad, and Ace 100? So uh, this brings me back to my youth. Kind of makes the hair stand up my arms. Thinking back to 1974 when I was nine years old, I used to race uh, uh, with uh, guys that had Wadaka 100. So I was on a little Suzuki 100. And just the chrome tank. In my opinion, this thing totally outclasses the Suzuki or, or Hondas of that year with the chrome tank, chrome fenders, chrome forks, red frame. It's it's just a gorgeous little bike. This one runs beautifully. Clutches, shifts, excellent. Plenty of power as it should from the day it was out of the box. So if you have any questions on this bike, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Um, I think the pictures and video pretty much explain the whole thing, but if you have any questions, feel free to call. Uh, good luck bidding. I hope it goes to another museum where it's preserved or maybe goes to somebody uh, who wants to bring it to vintage off-road events or maybe ride it to work in back there in the summer because it is a street legal bike. So um, good luck bidding on the bike. We're gonna put it back in the display. On the, in the museum on display until it finds a new home, hope it goes to a great home. So good luck and God bless.